Hello, Pastor Michael Rote here. Um, I want to continue on with my testimony. Uh, again, I'll, I'll reiterate here uh, that I know that my YouTube channel is extremely small. Uh, and you know, if anybody uh, happens to come across any of the videos that I make or come across these testimonies uh, and see it, I, I sure do hope it's a help and a blessing to you. Uh, but one of the main reasons why I'm wanting to do this uh, and have started doing this is uh, for my kids. Um, you know, I, I want them as they uh, as they get older uh, and as I get older, uh, you know how time time flies. And we, we understand that, especially the older we get, we know that time goes by quickly. And uh, and so I want to I have something like this for my kids and my grandkids uh, and, and for them to be able to look back on and see how the Lord worked in my life. Uh, and how the Lord used me to work in their lives, uh, and and how the Lord used me uh, to do a work for Him, and so uh, so that's one of the one of the biggest reasons, one of the main reasons why uh, I'm wanting to do this. And so, continuing on with my testimony here, this is part two. Uh, first part, I talked about how I got saved. Uh, now on this one here, I want to talk about how the Lord uh, called me to preach and placed me in the ministry. Um, to start off with, I, I got saved when I was very young, when I was five years old. Uh, and if you want to question whether uh, I understood that or not, go back and watch the, the first part of my testimony on salvation, uh, and you'll get the, the full idea of that. Uh, but I got saved when I was very young. Uh, I was, I've was i been in church all my life uh, since then. Um, when, uh, when I was... Uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'd say up to about thirteen years old. Uh, my grandpa, the one who won me to the Lord, uh, was my youth leader. Was uh, we were in a Southern Baptist church, uh, two Southern Baptist churches uh, that he was the RA leader in, which is a Royal Ambassadors. Uh, and uh, even though we were in uh, two different Southern Baptist churches, uh, it, we were were King James. Uh, only uh, in our in our studies in the RAs, my grandpa has always been uh, King James only, and uh, and so even when uh, the literature would be ordered, uh, that was you know, RA literature, and you know, sometimes I, I think it came in New American Standard or, or or something like that, Revised Standard Version or something like that. Uh, my grandpa would always just he would use the King James Bible to to teach us the lessons uh, and and all that, and I learned and I grew and. Um, and was taught how to be a soul winner uh, at a very young age. Uh, but like most kids, when they start getting 12, 13, 14 years old, uh, they're really not interested. Or a lot of kids I know, not all, but a lot of kids that I know uh, become interested in other things. I, I started playing baseball when I was five years old. started playing t-ball. And um, at about seven or eight years old, uh, man, I, I really just fell in love with playing baseball. Uh, and began to, to uh, stand out a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and boast on myself or brag on myself and say that I was something that I wasn't. Uh, but uh, but I began to really just, that's all I wanted to do was play ball. Um, when, you know, I would play uh, in the spring for for the city, in the city leagues. Um, and then uh, when I was at home, when we'd play outside, uh, my neighbors, I would get them together and we would play baseball. Um, my brother would, didn't want to go outside and play with me uh, because he knew that's all I wanted to do was play baseball. Um, as I got older, um, you know, I played in, in several all-star tournaments, which a lot of uh, boys my age in, in the area that were good enough played in those same tournaments. Um, but, uh, I, I, man, I just, that's all I wanted to do was play baseball. And so as I got older, I knew if I went over to Mamma and Papa's house, uh, I had to go to church, so I, you know I had to go to church. If I spent the night at their house, I had to go to church. But outside of that, all I cared about was playing ball. And uh, but I went to church, and uh, you know, and I, I showed some interest in it. But I, I was more concerned pl about playing ball. If I could have went and spent the night at Mama and Papa's house and skipped church to go play ball, and that would have been fine, I would have done that. Uh, so I'm glad I had grandparents that made it a priority, uh, and that and that really made an impact and impression on me. Um, when I was about 14 years old, um, my mom and dad wasn't in church, so we always went to church with with Mama and Papa, and they uh, they were 
uh, looking for for uh, for a church to call home, um, and we visited around with them a couple places, and uh, we ended up uh, at uh, Bright Light Baptist Church in Bessemer City, uh, and it just so happens the pastor there uh, was Wayne Reese, which was our very first pastor uh, at Emmanuel Baptist Church uh, when it was in a little storefront building. Uh, he pastored there, uh, and then all these years later, the Lord had led him there at Bright Light in Bessemer City, and so we knew him. We knew we liked his preaching, so we went and visited there, which is uh, which is not very far, about a 15-minute a drive from where my grandparents lived to uh, Bessemer City, the next town over uh, where the church was at, so it wasn't very far. And uh, so we went over there and we visited, uh, and um, of course we liked it uh, because we we we'd been around his preaching, we knew his preaching. I mean, that really, that's mo most of the preaching I knew. And uh, the church was uh, was very small at the time, uh, but it was beginning to grow. And uh, and so uh, my grandparents did something that I, I was baffled by then and still am today. I, we'd visited several churches, asked me and my brother what church we liked, and. Uh, I said bright light. I like bright light because I knew knew the preacher. I knew his family, and so that's where we ended up going. And uh, I remember we went there. And when we'd go to Sunday school, I didn't care to go to Sunday school, so I lied. When we would go and we'd go into the church building at Sunday, we'd they'd have a small Sunday school assembly, and then right after the assembly, everybody would dismiss and go to their Sunday school classes. Well, when Mama and Papa would go to their class, my brother would go to his class. I'd go outside. Um, occasionally, I would go to the Sunday school class, but most of the time, I would just go outside. Uh, and then at church time, of course, I'd go back inside and be in there for church. Um, so that went on for about uh, eight, nine months, something like that. Uh, and then that summer of 1999, I had just turned 15 years old, and uh, I was playing in an all-star tournament. And we were, we were, believe it or not, one win away. If I remember right, we were one win away uh, from being able to go to. Uh, we were going to travel from our from the uh, the district that we were playing in, and if we'd have won one more game, we would have won that district, and we would have moved on down towards the coast uh, to play for the state tournament. And uh, and man, I was all excited about it. And I'll tell you, I was playing some of the best baseball uh, that I ever played. Uh, I remember I, I was batting 756 for the for the series. Uh, I forget how many RBIs that I had. Uh, and I didn't have any errors in the field. I was playing some very good ball. But, you know, the way it goes is you're playing in all-star tournaments, so you're playing against teams from other towns who have got the best of the best in that age group playing as well. And uh, we we ended up not uh, not advancing, not winning. And, uh, man, I was I mean, I had my summer planned out. Man, I was just crushed uh, because, I mean, I was, I was on. I was playing some of the best baseball I'd ever played. And, uh, and so I was excited. I had my summer planned out as a 15 year old boy. I'm, we're going to win this all star tournament. I'm going to go down towards the coast. I'm going to play ball at night. I'm going to go out on the beach through the, through the day. Uh, I'm going to go chase girls. I don't, this is what's in my 15 year old brain. And, uh, that's what I had planned. And those plans fell apart. And so in my mind, my summer had just started, but it was already ruined. And my summer, summer break was already ruined. What I did not know was that Mamma and Papa had already paid mine and my brother's way to go to youth camp with the church. Uh, I had never been to youth camp before, didn't know what youth camp was, uh, and did not care to go. I, I just, you know, I wanted to go play ball. But all that fell apart, and so... Come to find out, this was probably the only time in my life that I think my grandparents were actually praying uh, that I would lose a ball game because they wanted wanted me to go to camp. And uh, so I figured, well, they've already paid the way. My summer break plans are ruined. Uh, so I guess I'll go to camp. And it would be a week long. I figured, well, I, you know what I can do? I can go to camp. I can fish. I can swim. I can chase girls. And I'll sit through a, you know, hour church service and, and, you know, and just make the best of it. That's what I had in my mind. We end up going, we, we, we left to go to camp. This was, uh, uh, in, we, it was in July, uh, the second week, I think it was second week in July. And, um, and so we went to camp 
And, uh, you know, I was excited because I'm going away from home, but, you know, it is what it is. We went to uh, New Mana's Youth Camp up in Marion, North Carolina. It's right on Lake James. Uh, I don't even think New Mana owns that camp anymore. I think they've sold that campground. Uh, but this was uh, in July of 1999. Went up there to that youth camp. And um, we got up there. And uh, there's several other churches that, that go at one time. Uh, that I think that campground, the way they had it structured, was there was different uh, youth camps uh, for a couple weeks. And uh, churches would reserve their time, and they would have a week there. And so there would be several churches there at one time, and uh, which was a great experience because, I mean, you're talking 800 to 1,000 teenagers maybe in uh, a ballpark here. And uh, so it was kind of exciting to get to meet a lot of people, see a lot of people. And, uh, I mean, it was, it was fantastic. Uh, and I'll tell you, getting alone, getting away from the things of the world, getting away from the things that was driving a wedge between me and the Lord was the greatest thing that could have happened to me. I felt the Lord begin to deal with me the very first service. I had no idea what, what was going on. I'm here, I'm 15 years old, and uh, I, I don't know what's going on. I know I'm saved, uh, but I, I feel this, this burden, this conviction on me, and, and I didn't know what was going on. And then uh, we'd have service in the morning, service at night, and then after the night service, they had had like a floating dining room. It was it was just like a big dock that was uh, that was screened in, had a roof on it, had picnic tables out on it, and it had a little pulpit over on the back side of it. And there was all these teenage boys my age, maybe a, you know a little younger, a little bit older. But at nighttime after the evening services, a bunch of teens would gather down there, and all of a sudden I would see these these young men my age standing up with a shirt and tie on, a Bible in hand, and get behind the pulpit and get up there and preach as hard as they could uh, for five, six, seven, eight minutes. And uh, and I was like, man, it really got my interest. And uh, I mean, I was just, I'd never seen anything like that before. And I remember one of the evening services, I remember going to one of my friends. I, I didn't, at the time, didn't have many friends in the youth group because I didn't show myself friendly. Uh, I was kind of just kept to myself, but I went to one of the, the one of the young men in the youth group uh, that I that I kind of looked up to a little bit, and I went to him and I told him I said, you know, I, I don't know what's going on here, but uh, I just feel like the Lord's dealing with me about something. Would you pray with me? And he told me he would, and so we got down in the floor of our our cabin, and uh, we began to pray. And as we began to pray, I noticed that the, the noise level in the cabin was getting louder and louder, and I realized that there were other people inside the cabin uh, that were praying too. And uh, next thing I know, I don't know how long we'd been praying, uh, but when I stood up, there was boys, teenage boys, just, I mean, packed in there from our church group and from other groups, packed in there, and they were praying uh, with me and praying together. And I realized that the windows was open on the on the, on the, the, the bunkhouse there, and that there were boys that had surrounded it. And I don't know how many teenage boys was there inside and around it that was praying, but we were all praying at one time. And I'm telling you what, a, an amazing time that was. And and uh, I remember going to church the next day, the morning service, and boy, I went down to the altar and prayed, and I said, Lord, I don't know what you want, but Lord, whatever it is, uh, Lord, I'll surrender to you and do whatever it is you want me to do. I remember that night, going to the night service, and it, boy, it got on, and I remember going down to the altar and praying the same thing, Lord, I don't know what it is you want me to do, but Lord, whatever it is, God, I'll do it. Just, uh, just help me. Give me some direction. I, I want to do what it is you've called me to do. And I remember I went back out that night, and went out there to that floating dining room and heard those young men preaching again. You could hear it echoing out across the lake. And it was like something clicked. And it was like, I knew that's what I needed to be doing. That's what I needed to be doing. And so I remember the next night, July 14th, 1999, that night service, I went down to the altar and I surrendered my life to the Lord and said, Lord, I'll preach your word. Lord, I'll do whatever it is that you'd have me to do. I went back and I told my pastor, my youth pastor, because they were there and they were excited and they prayed with me. And uh, and we finished out camp. I'm telling you, our youth group was on fire for God, stirred up. Uh, I, matter of fact, on the way home, we ended up, I think, with three or four, counting myself, uh, young men who surrendered to preach. And so the Lord laid it on our pastor's heart. He said, you know what? I want to give these these young men an opportunity to preach. And so we started having Friday night youth, ser youth services. We did it every Friday night at 8 o'clock. And, um, and what, what we started was, this was about a month after camp. Uh, we'd do it on Friday nights. And the way it started was we would, we, uh, would go inside 
and we did what we call tag team preaching. Some people call it popcorn preaching. Uh, my church now, we do what we call it cowbell preaching because we got a cowbell that we ring uh, to stop one preacher and get the next one to come up. And they usually get five, ten minutes, somewhere in that range. And um, so the preacher said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get the youth together. We're going to have a big youth service, invite other youth to come, and uh, we're going to turn these guys loose and let them do some tag team preaching. I remember the, the first time I preached, I think I had like 12, 14 pages of notes, and I preached for like a minute and a half, and I was done. Nobody had to tell me to stop. I was done. Uh, but the next Friday night, we did street preaching. And uh, what we did where our church was located at there in Bessemer was on the busiest intersection. It was actually like a, a, a five-way crossing there. And uh, so we had young men uh, at every corner uh, to, to preach. When the light would turn red, we would just hold our Bibles up and give the gospel as loud and as quick as we could. And we had others that would be there with gospel tracks and they'd hold them up. And if people rolled the window down, they'd hand it to them and invite them to church and and so this is what we did every other friday we was inside tag team preaching and then every other friday night we were outside uh doing the street preaching and i'm telling you god moved in that and god moved in my life in that and stirred me up and i got so excited and and i remember hearing my pastor preach and and i remember him talking to to uh to all of us young preachers and he told us he said you know one of the best things that you could do is get involved in the bus ministry. Our church, I had a, a, a bus ministry, very small bus ministry at the time. I uh, didn't have but two routes, I think, at the time. I had one bus that, that went out uh, and then had a church van that went and picked up a few folks. Uh, but it was it was very young and it was very small. It wasn't, uh, you know, and, and, but God was blessing it. And, uh, and I remember, boy, as soon as I heard him say that, uh, I got excited. I was like, you know what? That's what I want to do. And so I went and found the, the, the gentleman that was over the bus ministry and the one that was driving the, the bus. And uh, I went to him and told him, I said, I want to help. I don't know what to do, but I want to help. And uh, I said, because I was a bus kid at one time. And so I started going out on Saturdays and, uh, and helping them. I was what they called a runner. Uh, when we on Sundays, what we'd do is I'd go with them on the bus. Uh, they would pick me up at my house in their car, take us to uh, uh, Brother Matthew Singleton would come by my house and pick me up in his car on Sunday mornings. And sometimes it was Brother uh, Matt Litton. Uh, they would pick me up, would go to church on Sunday. And I was a runner. So what we'd do is every stop that we had, our regulars, the bus would pull up, they would blow the horn. I would get off the bus, go to the door very quickly, uh, knock on the door and walk them back to the bus. That's what I started out doing. And I'd go with them on Saturdays to visit. And we would visit all of our regular kids. Uh, and then we'd eat some lunch somewhere real quick. And then we'd go knock on some doors somewhere. And uh, I was excited about it. And the Lord was blessing it. And and uh, and then I, I remember I hear my pastor tell me, he said, Son, he said, if you can't build a bus route, God will never be able to use you to build a church. And I thought, you know what? We're going to try to build this bus route. And uh, I remember over time, I became the captain of the bus route, and uh, which means that I was in charge of the, I was kind of like the pastor, if you will, of the bus route. And, uh, and so, um, began to knock on doors and, uh, and, and it got to where that's all I wanted to do. And, uh, my family, my mom and dad wasn't in church at the time and, and they would throw that up in my face and, you know, say, that's all you want to do. That's all you want to do. My dad got mad at me because, um, I had, uh, I was in high school and, uh, I quit playing baseball. I just decided, you know what, I'm done. This is not what God's called me to do. God's called me to preach. And so I devoted all of my time uh, to the ministry, you know, what what ministry I was involved in. And uh, and so I started doing that. And, of course, then that led to me helping out with uh, Children's Church. And it got to where that, uh, that I was preaching quite often in Children's Church. I'd preach uh, on my bus route. Once we'd get everybody on the bus, I would preach a five-minute message uh, on the way to church after the last stop that we picked up. And then I would do the same thing after church. Sometimes I would preach a five or ten minute message on the bus uh, on the way back to take them home uh, before the first stop, from the point of leaving the church to the first stop. And then got to preach a good bit in children's church and was doing the the uh, the, the the tag team preaching and uh, and and the street preaching. And uh, I just I tell you I was really loving that and God was moving in it and God was blessing in that and. Uh, uh, and so, to make a long story short here, because I'm, I'm, I don't want to get into the other uh, parts of, uh, of my testimony here, it's going to stick with God calling me to preach, uh, but this is how the Lord did it for me. Uh, I was in church all my life. Uh, 
but I didn't really, you know, I hit those early preteen, teenage years and um, wasn't all that interested in church. Uh, but then the Lord uh, kind of, in a sort of roundabout way, took away the one thing that I loved that I held in regard above Him and then got me alone where it was just me and Him and He began to work on my heart and got me where I needed to be. Uh, and then I was able to, I was at a place spiritually where I could make the final decision and say, okay, you know what? I'm done with this. I don't want to play ball anymore, uh, which was very promising because I did have the opportunity to pray uh, to play uh, in front of some, some scouts at a very young age. I played in a tournament uh, in South Carolina uh, where I was the youngest, uh, youngest uh, kid, youngest boy in the tournament, and I got to play in front of some scouts there, and uh, I got to meet them and uh, my dad. I uh, actually got to watch, witness uh, one of them uh, writing my name down after I made a, a, a diving backhand uh, at third base. And so, uh, you know, that's why my dad got upset with me uh, when I decided I wasn't going to play no more. And uh, I don't know if I would have had any future in that, but it doesn't matter. Um, God got me where I needed to be spiritually, where I was able to make that call and say, you know what? I don't want this anymore. I want to give my all to the Lord. And so July 14th, 1999 is when I surrendered to preach. Just so happens that's my wife's birthday. Did not know her then, uh, but my wife's birthday is July 14th. And so uh, what a blessing that is. So July 14th, 1999 is when I surrendered to, to, to preach God's word and to serve him and just do whatever it is he would have me to do. And uh, I'd like to say that today is March 6th, 2023. Uh, when I'm recording this, March the 6th, 2023. Uh, and I've, I've been faithful in, in trying to do what God's called me to do. And so I want to say this. I'm thankful that God has placed me in the ministry. I'm thankful that I have the opportunity to, to preach his word. Uh, I am by no means uh, the greatest preacher in the world, uh, the greatest preacher in my country, the greatest preacher in my state, in my county. I'm not even the best preacher in my church. Uh, but you know what? I've got a good God, and I've got a great book that he's given me, the King James Bible, his word that I get to preach from and get to share his word from. And I thank God for every opportunity that I've had along the way. And I thank God for every opportunity I still have today uh, to be able to be a witness for him, to preach his word, and to share his word. And so I thank God that I'm saved, and I thank God for the second part of my testimony here of the change that God's made in my life, and on July 14th, 1999, been able to surrender to him to preach his word and do what he's called me to do. I'll say this. I have no regrets. I have no regrets. I thank God that I get to serve him. What an honor, what a privilege it is to be able to serve the Lord and to represent him and to proclaim his name for others to hear and for them to have an opportunity to have a relationship with our great God Almighty, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so I hope and pray if, if anybody does see this that it's a help and a blessing to you. Uh, if you're a young man and maybe you felt like that God's dealing with your heart um, about surrendering to, to preach his word or to serve him uh, in some capacity, I hope that my testimony uh, is a help to you. Maybe it's similar to yours. Uh, and maybe to be a help to you to make the decision to serve God. Uh, but for my children, uh, for when they view this, maybe when they're older, or grandchildren or, or what have you, I, I hope that you see this and I hope that I'm leaving a, a legacy for you to follow. Uh, I hope that, uh, that you'll be able to uh, look back at this video and listen to my testimony and be able to say, he really loved the Lord. And he made an impact on my life, and I want to serve the Lord and be even more faithful uh, than he was to the Lord. I, I want to do even more for the Lord than he has. And so I, I hope this is a help and a blessing to my children and grandchildren uh, that may watch this down the line, to my family. And uh, But most importantly, I just want to honor God. God sure has been good to me, and I'm thankful that he's placed me in the ministry. I mean, I hope this is helping a blessing to you. God bless you. I love you. Please pray for me. Pray for my family. Pray that the Lord uses for his honor and for his glory. God bless you. Talk to you again real soon.